The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 691. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She has a background in film and martial arts, and she just recently competed for the Beanie Beanie Filipinas pageant, which is the Miss Universe in the Philippines. And I'm really excited to have her on to share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Julia Sobier. Julia, how are you today? Maybe maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to talk about this subject. I feel like it's very timely, and especially given my background and what I just did. But yeah, as Sheena mentioned, I have a background in film and martial arts. I'm half Filipino and half French. I was born in France and grew up here in the Philippines. And then I went abroad to NYU Abu Dhabi, where I studied film and politics, and then moved to London, worked in film for a bit, then moved to Beijing and did my master's at Peking University in Chinese cinema and economics. And then I just competed in the Miss Universe pageant here in the Philippines just this spring semester, and simultaneously also was finishing up my master's in China. So it was a lot, but I definitely learned a lot from the experience, and I'm really excited to talk more about it. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Julia, in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think that self-confidence is really loving yourself. It's, yeah, being in love with who you are and appreciating yourself. And, you know, no one's perfect. (laughs) I think that that takes a lot, especially when we're bombarded with so many images and ideas that tell us that, you know, we're not worthy or we're not enough. But I think that Self-confidence is really just loving yourself for who you are, accepting yourself for your shortcomings and your limitations, but having a really healthy relationship with your body, your mind, your ambition, everything about you. So yeah, I think that that would be my definition of self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Julia, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Oh gosh, I feel like, you know, to be honest, I think as... Asian women were bombarded with so many images and ideas of of beauty that really has nothing to do with us. And unfortunately, as women, I think that the brunt of our idea of self-worth, so much of it is rooted in how we look. And that's unfortunate because I don't think that that's, you know, the most important thing about a person, definitely not. But I think that that's the reality in many in many cultures and many situations and circumstances and unfortunately as Asian women I think that we don't have that many images or you know cultural references or representations that really put us in an empowering light and I'm talking about you know our global media obviously I I live in the Philippines so I, I do belong to the majority here because Filipinos are Asian but even in our own culture and media and representations you do see tendencies to put you know, women on screen who are more, you know, who have Eurocentric features, who are are white, you know, there's so many ads for whitening. So, you know, growing up, I was exposed to all of this. And I think I really then kind of turned away from, you know, focusing on how it looked or really caring about that aspect of of me. I mean, of course, yeah, you you care about it. It's uh, undeniable that it's going to be a part of you and, and a part of how people interpret and understand you. But I think I really focused on my studies and focused on developing myself as a person. And that really became like my my source of self-confidence. So I didn't really seek validation or self-confidence from the way that I looked. Of course, when I was in confrontation with kind of thinking about how I looked and how it was perceived and appreciated globally, like that's when I would kind of reassess or take a step back or feel like, oh, well, this is awful that that people don't recognize that I have this sense of self-worth and so obviously that affects your confidence but I think before I sort of took pride in my Asian features and took pride in and how I looked and kind of understand understood who I am as an Asian and a mixed person I think that I really based my self-confidence on yeah my character and my values and who I am but it's not nice to (laughs) to 
people who have this, you know, feeling of doubt or feeling like you're not enough. That was a very long answer. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, that's something we all go through, right? especially as women, like just women in general, that notion of beauty. I mean, you look at the cover of the magazine, it's like, if you're not a size zero, yeah. you, you're not pretty. If you're too dark, you're not pretty. And, you know, you see billboards everywhere, yeah. which is crazy because you know, most of these things, most of these photos are like altered to a T, you know, they're fully edited. And we have to realize like, not like that realistic beauty that, you know, we that people don't show like beauty comes in all different forms, shapes, sizes, color. And you know, we all have our own beauty that we have to just showcase and it starts from the inside. And it'll, you know, come out as we keep working, you know, in our with our inner self. And what was that point in your life when you realized you were more than enough to go out there and be who you are today? Um, what was that aha moment? Well, I, I like I really like what you said, like, just just to go back to that really quickly, like there's so much like photoshop and there's so much plastic surgery like we're not even aware of it so like we're looking at all these images and we're like we want to aspire to that we're like okay well if that's like the definition of beauty then i guess i should that like inch towards that but we're not even in full understanding of how much you know these images and these people have been altered and so it's like you're aspiring to something that's not even realistic and i feel like that's really important to talk about as well because kind of when you accept that that's just how it is like when you accept that all these images are altered and all these people are altered then I think you you kind of feel better about yourself and and what you have to offer because you realize that it's unrealistic to aspire to something like that but anyways going back to your question I think that the turning point was quite late in my life I think probably when I left the Philippines probably and went away for college because I guess if we're talking just about physical beauty, because I feel like my self-confidence with who I was and my character and, and what I wanted from life, I feel like that was always very, very strong, like very strong. But I think that, you know, having a sort of self-confidence and your physical look, that that really came much later, like when I went off to college, because I left the Philippines and, you know, because I think that, of course, the Western-centric or Eurocentric of beauty that's everywhere but I feel like especially here in the Philippines and you know in my school environment and and with everything that I was consuming and, and everything that you know people were saying to me I really kind of didn't take pride in my like Asian look and I feel like that's pretty normal here so it wasn't until I left the Philippines and went away for college that I really had this understanding of you know, why it is this way, like why we're basically brainwashed into thinking that, you know, the standard, you know, is the standard and learned more about like global power dynamics and was also, you know, immersed in a very diverse setting. And, you know, for the first time was hearing that like, oh, people like really appreciated how I looked. So I think it was really probably in college when I was 18. That's when I first developed this sense of like, you know, inner self-worth with, with regards to how I looked. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, because of that, what's your life been like now? Yeah, I, I think that just leaving your wherever you are and, you know, gaining a better and bigger perspective. And then also, I think in combination with, you know, being in college, like being in this very like academic, intellectually rigorous sort of situation and kind of examining my values and my habits of mind, like that was also really fundamental and kind of giving me that sort of inner self-confidence or physical look so I think combination of both of those things but I think ever since I've realized this or kind of gained this inner superpower I've become much more open and honest about criticizing these sort of institutions and systems that I think are failing us because they're telling us that we need to aspire to something that we're not and I think that having this sort of clarity you know I'm not perfect obviously like it's no one is but like having this sort of clarity around this issue and having been abroad and looked at it from a distance and you know even seeing it for what it is over there because there's so much of it over over there in Europe and in the U.S. and Canada and, and Australia like there's so much of this you know privileging of a certain look and a certain you know ethnicity like you see this in film like my background is in film and you know there's so much talk right now about diversity in the film industry and people are wondering like you know why aren't we casting more ethnically diverse actors you know why don't we have as many roles for 
you know, Asians and other minorities. And I think, at, honestly, at the root of it is, I mean, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. But one of the things is that our understanding of beauty and our understanding of who is worthy enough to get screen time, who's worthy enough of being the lead, who do we see in these like inspiring, you know, roles and, and positions of power, a big part of that is because our understanding of who fits into these roles is very limited and it's very racist because it's been, how do I say this? It's been yeah, very, very limiting. You know, most of the roles that we see, the leads, they're all white. And even in America where, you know, it, it has such a diverse population. So I think that really it, expanding this idea of you know what it means to be beautiful and, and who deserves that attention and who deserves to s deserves to see themselves in that inspiring way that's that's really important as well and making the link making the link between this problem in you know the lack of representation and in our conception and our understanding of beauty because those two things are linked and unfortunately not many people are making the connection so i think that you know since i've discovered this and like gained more clarity around this i've become more outspoken about you know talking about these sorts of issues so that hopefully i can make people more you know self-aware and and give them sort of the confidence that they need because they know that you know it's not them it's a it's an entire system that pressuring them into into conforming to an unrealistic standard and you know basically putting forth images of you know eurocentric people in front of them so i think just being more open and more outspoken about it and then also it's kind of strengthened my motivations for wanting to work in film and wanting to sort of lead these conversations on race and nationalism and beauty and diversity and how this is all reinforced by our you know cultural references and films so yeah that's how my life has changed <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. And Julia, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Ooh, one tip only. <laughs> oh my God, that's that's so hard to just give one piece of advice. Um, okay, well, I think two things, um, if that's okay. Because I'm, you know, you mentioned that I have a background in film and martial arts. And, you know, both have been sort of, well, the first has been kind of very destructive, and then now it's become very empowering. And then martial arts has just been so incredible and in sort of giving me that self-confidence. So I think for the first one, I'd probably, like, related to film, I think it's really important to immerse yourself in, in stories and representations and sort of images of yourself that are inspiring and empowering and I think that that's really important. So, you know, looking to literature that affirms who you are and, you know, watching movies where you can relate to the to the lead because of, you know, who she is as a person and because of how she looks physically. I think that that's really important because just having sort of, you know, cultural references and, and stories where you see yourself represented in an empowering way and an inspiring way, I think that that's really important for, you know, building a strong sense of self-confidence as well. And the second one would be, related to my martial arts practice I think that um doing sports and you know I've been a varsity athlete my whole life and have a really important uh, martial arts practice as well I think that really investing in your physical health and you know this this also is an investment in your mental health I think that really challenging yourself physically and working with your body I think can really give you a strong sense of self-confidence because you will understand that you're so much more capable of you're so much more capable than you think you are and I think that really operating at your physical limits or really pushing yourself physically I think that that can really yeah boost your self-confidence and and give you a really healthy relationship with your body and I think that sports and you know working in a team setting or working in martial arts I think that all of these things can have an amazing effect on 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 yourself because you realize your inner strength and your inner resolve. So I think that those would be my two pieces of advice. One, immerse yourself in, you know, stories and culture that affirms you. And two, really, you know, do sports and work with your body and test yourself physically because through that you'll discover your inner resolve. And I think that that's something to be proud of, definitely. 
Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing those amazing tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, sure. You can find me at, you know, on Instagram or on Facebook. I have a public page now or my Twitter actually, I think is where I have like probably my most valuable kind of information. Um, I share a lot about like what I read and, you know, what I watch and my thoughts. So yeah, everything is just at Julia Sobie and Sobie is S-A-U-B-I-E-R. So at Julia Sobie and you can find me on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Julia, you can also head on over to the thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Julia's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Julia today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Julia. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheena, for having me. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. I think it's so important that we share, you know, our own journeys to self-confidence because I'm sure that that can, you know, enlighten and inspire other people as well. I totally agree. And thanks. And thank you again for doing the interview. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.